Hello, everyone. Hi. We are back and ready for a state of play. This is uh, a weird day with the uh, the Nintendo Direct happening in the morning, and then now Sony happening in the afternoon time. Uh, they just they said, "Hey, Tokyo Game Show is coming up. We got to get these announcements out. We got to we got to crank this stuff out." And and so you know, because otherwise. You know, hey, TGS is going to happen, and some of these games are going to be being shown there. I'm sure, at least, especially with the all the third party stuff in the um, in the Nintendo Direct. I'm sure Square is probably showing a lot of that stuff there. So they got to get it out because TGS is coming pretty soon. Here, it's this it's this weekend, right? I know people are over there now. I only know that because I saw a picture of Kenny Omega in Japan, and I'm like, well, that's. He's there for TGS, so so I guess uh, I guess it must be on. Um, yeah, the fifteenth. So that's so it's probably already the fourteenth there, right? So that's technically coming pretty quick. Yeah, let's see. Uh, you know, yeah. I, I uh, what is the state of play right now? Asks Santa shot first in the Twitch chat. That's a great question. I'd say the state of play right now is strained. It is uh. There's a bunch of hot stuff, but maybe sometimes it feels like it's spread out a little too far, spread a little too thin. Sometimes it's not launching the way you want it. All of that, you know, it's a, it's a weird, it's a weird time. It's been a weird, I mean, it's been a weird few years, but it just now, like nowadays it feels really, you just, it's, it's uncertain as to what's going to happen next when it comes to how expensive game development has gotten and all of this stuff. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's uh can Sony keep they, they say it's very profitable for them so I assume so can they keep focusing on the kind of prestige television style single player experiences that they are known for obviously Sony is trying to expand out and they're like hey we're going to have like 20 different live games uh, we're acquiring studios we're doing this we're doing that um, and so We'll kind of see how that all goes, but, um, yeah, it's, hmm. anything can happen. I don't know. This is probably, I'm mean, probably not all first party stuff, right? That would be weird, but presumably we will see a, a smattering of first and third. Uh, of course I would have said that this morning about Nintendo and they, uh, well, less than a smattering. So what do we got here? It's uh yes. So they're billing this as. 20-ish minutes of reveals, new updates, and fresh gameplay footage for 10 games coming to PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, and PlayStation VR 2. I mean, the way that's written almost sounds like uh, that every one of these 10 games is coming to all three of those things. That's almost certainly not the case. Let's head over uh, to let's head over to the conversation pit here and see what's, what's going on. <laughs> How's this going? All right, they're still doing that for another six minutes here. I'm going to turn that down real low. Um, yeah, so yeah, will we see how many of these, what percentage of these 10 games, I'll say percentage because it being 10 games make it easy, makes it easy to figure out the percentage. Um, what percentage of this lineup here at the state of play will be farming focused? That's the big question. That's my big question. 20 minutes is not very long. Uh, you know, getting through 10 games in 20 minutes, that's, hmm. I mean, that's roughly two minutes a game, give or take. So probably not going to see any big old um, deep dives into much of anything here today. They'll kind of cruise through some stuff. I, you know, I saw some people saying like, oh, maybe we'll get a price and date for PlayStation VR 2. I, you know, anything's possible. I don't know that I... I don't know that that makes sense here. They have plenty of time to announce that stuff later. And uh, I, I don't I don't think that they necessarily need to make that move right here, right now. Um, 
also i think between the price of the playstation 5 going up and the price of the oculus um quest going up I, uh, pricing information is just going to be a bummer if they give it so uh you know hold it for a little bit maybe i don't know yeah, will we see a new car game? No, probably not. Uh, I saw some folks that are working on God of War retweeting the link to this thing with the eyes emoji, and you know what that means. I don't know. I don't know what that means. I think it means the God of War will probably be here in some form, even though that game is as known as a known quantity can be. Uh... Yeah, will we see any PC games here? I mean, they haven't announced. Did they? Did they announce that uh, that Returnal was coming to PC already, or is that just everyone is assuming that coming? I can't even remember anymore. Yeah, the, yeah, we'll have the 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 two minute breakdown of God of War's new farming mode, which is pretty exciting. Uh, Returnal Two is a roguelike uh, sci-fi shooter with a, a farming twist. That is really uh, that's really got a lot of people talking around the studio. Um, so you know, throw your gold rocks up, and we're gonna we're gonna make it happen here. Um, we'll see. Yeah, Marco in in the chat here points out that Gran Turismo was on that Nvidia leak list. What's that? That Nvidia leak list has been, let's say, fairly accurate. You know, the things that haven't happened kind of just haven't happened yet. So anything anything is possible. When it comes to this, I'm trying to think, you know, are there just, are there big Sony franchises that I would love to see return? I, I don't know that I have any really great answers to that, to that question. I, I think that they've been, they, they've been serving their audience well. And I, I'm curious to see kind of once they're, once they get, they've acquired some studios, they've made some moves there, obviously with Bungie and some of this other stuff going on. Um, what does when, when all those studios are kind of in the fold and firing on all cylinders and everything's moving forward, what is that going to be like? What will that output look like? You know, I feel like Sony needs a little bit more diversity in its lineup. And I think, you know, the, the Bungie acquisition, I think is a, is a good move for them. Um, and I, yeah, I just, I don't know. I would like to see some more variety in the styles of game. I feel like Sony used to be better about that stuff, but you know, this business maybe used to be better at that stuff. It's easy to look back on the PlayStation days and go, man, remember when they made a rally game and they made a football game, you know, and they made ape escape and they, you know, there was just, there was such a wide swath of games and genres being covered by Sony's internal studios. And obviously it's not that anymore. But you know, yeah, the, the the we are. It is a time for a Sony event, so naturally, someone. If it's not me, it's someone else in the chat. And sure enough, it is JSMC two saying, "Bring back Jet Moto." Yeah, they should do that. At this point, you know, I I'm going to say that maybe instead of the um, you know, bring the invariable kind of bring back wipeout thing that I am always you know the the drum that I am always beating. That maybe, yeah, why not change it up? You know, wipe out. Wipe out's a time and place thing. And it's so wrapped up in nostalgia for that genre of music that was on the Wipeout XL soundtrack and all that other stuff that, yeah, Jet Moto. Maybe it's Jet Moto's time. Not a lot of water based racing games happening. You know, it's like Nintendo could have had it. They could have, they, hey, they could have announced a new wave race this morning. They could have done anything. They did not. Yeah, will we see some big third-party stuff here? Will it be, you know, it'll be, maybe it's just some unannounced Capcom game just dropping out the sky. Just Who knows? Uh, yeah, this is a Virtua Fighter 6. You know? Yeah, maybe yeah, an Armored Core show. Yeah, Cool Cool Tune 2. That's, that's what we're getting. There's a lot, yeah. Anyway, a lot of directions this could go because obviously any third party could probably have something here. Uh, so here we go. Two seconds to a new Ridge Racer, right?
right? This isn't Ridge Racer. Are we going to find out what this thing is? Oh, it is a Namco game. Fight! <laughs> These guys are doing the Tekken thing. Yeah, yeah, follow up. Give me the dubstep. Make me feel young again with the dubstep. Okay, yeah, he's... I'm ready for a new Tekken. Last Tekken was quite good. It is still quite good. I got all of the achievements in the Xbox version. No. I got the Platinum Trophy in the PlayStation version, I think is what I did. But, um... By the way, the Devil Gene... Yes, we must break these chains. Okay. They should make a Tekken 8. I hate uh, that's a I know that's a bold It's official. Tekken 8 is coming to the PlayStation 5 console courtesy of our battle-hardened friends at Bandai Namco Entertainment. Now, let's good, check it, in on two games in development for PlayStation VR 2. There's a good looking trailer that, you know, that looked a lot like gameplay. Obviously, we'll kind of see what the what the story is there. But, you know, there were gameplay style animations there. I just, you know, I just want him to fall over and for his back. Go. Was telling, it was about a certain droid repair tech who had no business getting into I bet you're wondering how I got here on this Star Wars. Standing against evil wherever it popped up. <laughs> Oh, is, Ga is Galaxy's Edge the thing that's in Disneyland? Is that what they call that? The locals can be a little rough. Oh, I don't like this at all. I do not like the vibe. Of, I don't love. Do not like the lighthearted vibe of this commentary. Okay, this is a quest game that came out last year. Okay, all right. But this is Enhanced Edition. Ready for battle. Let all monsters... Hi. My aim is true. Taste my steel. I call lightning. This, like, this metaphor for, like, VR over a table while things happen stuff is really cool and I think once you've seen it a few times the novelty of the perspective kind of wears off a little bit uh, and by a little bit I suppose I mean a lot oh yeah Demio yeah I wonder if that will so that they eventually had to release a or had to they, they eventually released a non VR version of this on PC Demio brings the creativity Demio. and chaos of a tabletop RPG to PS VR 2 and I wonder if this will also have the this next game is being rebuilt from the ground up and will be available outside of Japan for the first time This is, um, the, the, that Yakuza game, right? The one whose name I cannot remember, right? Or no, what? Hmm. 
Yeah. No. Sakamoto Ryoma san yo. Might as well get them all over here. While, strike while the iron is hot. While people are into this franchise, like, localize all of them. Why wouldn't you? You've got an audience that is uh, excited for this franchise in a way that no one ever thought possible. <laughs> uh, so... Like a dragon is she, what a weird what a weird way to name that game what a strange like weird roundabout like the ways that they came to that name right i mean hello madam mason i understand you have a shop to sell i think you will find my terms quite generous what's the catch you are wise to be wary why is your mistress selling the shop? She has had rotten bad luck with the last few tenants. People were mean to her on the internet. And so she sold the shop. Those who came before you just could not seem to escape the darkness. Will you? Watch your step. <laughs> A PlayStation exclusive quest. Now I'm on board. Now I'm like, wait. Olympic exclusion zone is a really good little phrase. Come back, Big Dan. He left in 2008. What? That's okay. All right. This station wagons don't have. This is all right. Now I'm I'm completely taken out of the universe. This is. Oh jeez. I mean, this is a pretty. This is a pretty sick station wagon. Quarantine rebooted for a new generation. This time, you're a station wagon instead of a taxi. The power of the 3DO, finally. So, do they go and make a zombie game where you barely get out of the car? Or... That seems bad. Another one in the zombie Call game? God. Now. That's kind of neat. I don't know. Uh, it leaves you with some intrigue as to what it might actually be, despite actually showing some gameplay, which is nice. Survive a ride from hell in Pacific Drive, the debut game from Ironwood Studio. Up next, let's check in on PlayStation Stars, a loyalty program rolling out soon. They check in on it. I mean, other than that newspaper article, has there been anything about PlayStation Stars out Hi, there? Hi, everyone. I'm Grace Chen. Not long ago, we announced our brand new loyalty program called PlayStation Stars. It's designed to celebrate you, the players. 
it will be free to join PlayStation Stars. As a member, you can complete various activities to earn points that can be redeemed for rewards. Digital collectibles are a highlight of the program. Digital collectibles. These are digital representations of things that PlayStation fans love. They already said these Today, were not. I'm pleased to give you a sneak peek at some examples not some of blockchain our garbage. Yeah. Of Whether course. it's a beloved game character or a cherished device from Sony's innovative history. Astro's, the, I mean, Astro's already did this. Astro's Playroom already did, did this and did it really, really well. And, and I have more good news. PlayStation Stars will begin to roll out in some regions in Asia starting in late September. It will launch in the Americas and Europe in the weeks that follow. That's it for now. Check PlayStation Blog to learn more about PlayStation Stars. That's it for now. That felt very light, but that again, I, I feel like the concept of a loyalty program with what they've already said about it seems pretty straightforward anyway. So, you know, yeah, why not? You can earn some like earn different. Earn, here's a different type of trophy that you can get for being loyal to PlayStation or, or whatever. So. Ayo! Get this crystal, Ayo! This looks alright. I mean, it looks weirdly flat in some ways, but like, I don't, I don't know, like. <gasps> anime sin duality does she live in the mech suit another namco joint these next two intense action games are ps5 console exclusives let's take a look console exclusives It's a good looking beard. Rest of this dude is not so hot. He should probably get checked out, but. What's up? Distracting boob jiggle across this trailer. <laughs> is the absolute you know i was just thinking that i've got a wheel for a hand because why not i i like the visual style of this the clothing and the effect you know dude with his gas mask and all this stuff like this is i like the look of this you know, character action games are always going to kind of live and die by how they play, upgrade systems, all that other stuff. This dude's beard, it's a nice looking beard. It's 
I, what does that even say? Something blade. <laughs> Start off with an S. Stellar blade. Okay. Stellar blade. We'll go with stellar blade. Koei Tecmo making a sequel to that Ubisoft bird game. After three centuries of the Tokugawa's repressive rule, the black ships appeared without warning, and our nation began to tear itself apart. Those who clean no the smoking. Past, those Ching. who embrace the new. And the Ronin, a warrior free of all masters and bonds. Okay. I will watch over you. They uh, oh, eh, a little more. Blades carve a new future. Okay, yeah. Why not? Have a cool a grappling hook attack. I'm on board. Yeah, cut that dude's head off. Let's go. Cool grappling hooks and murdering. Rise Wait. As one. Yep, yeah, okay. That looked fun. Well, that dude's got a gun now. Sure. 2024. Yeah, we'll be around then. We'll have time for... Rise of the Ronin in 20 in 2024. That's not a real year. Change and upheaval in Rise of the Ronin, a sprawling action RPG from Team Ninja. Before we wrap up, we've got one more update for you. I, you know, this is, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Like, this game is so close now that it feels like a... Oh, this changes everything. Okay, at least there's a new announcement attached to it. I was going to say, like, if they just had, like, a God of War trailer here, that would be super weird. But now is but now is this the everyone keeps secrets. Yeah. Sometimes it's the only way to protect the ones we love. Yeah, it, 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 I, it's they've shown quite a bit of it. Have they shown enough of it? It's coming out. I know. Pretty him. soon here. God. I, 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 I'm not saying don't show it. I'm saying maybe don't close what with it. You want from me? But I guess whatever. They close with it because they want people to go pre-order it. They're like, hey, you should go buy this. What the hell? Please. Oh, God. You don't really want more. Do you, Kratos? I mean, well, look at the name on the box. Hands, Do I want war? Hands. What is it you will not tell me? I can't talk about it. But I just need you to trust me. We follow your every whim. But you don't believe in any of it. And still, I follow. Because all that matters is that you are safe. But that's not all that matters. Who's keeping you safe? I do not need you to protect me. You sure about that? Pretender God! We're the old father! Death can have me when it loves me. He's doing a Kratos. Kratos doing what Kratos do. Hitting people with shields and chain fire chains. Yeah. Can you even imagine that kind of love? No. You don't care about anything beyond yourself. Beyond the monster who kills without cause. You know, this is this is probably an unpopular uh, 
take or whatever, but fate only binds you if you let it. Yeah, see, this is how you open up the next temple. You gotta shoot the, you get the fire arrows, and do what is necessary. What if they did this game? What if they made another God of War, but you didn't play as Kratos and you just played as the kid? I'm not saying that would be an amazing video game or whatever, we but will make our own destiny. I don't know. Kratos is the guy behind you doing that. And yeah, maybe by the time they're done with this trilogy, they'll get there or whatever. But, um, and that's I don't know. The show. God of War Ragnarok comes to PS5 at PS4 on November 9th. See you next time. See you next time. Yeah, it's just that game is so close to out. You know, it's kind of like, uh, you know, closing with it's a little weird, but it's nice to have someone just stand up and say Tekken 8. Because I feel like coming out of Evo, there was just enough weirdness around the way that that thing got revealed that you had people going like, uh, what, what did, what are we looking at here? What are we actually looking at here? And, and is people going like, is this, is this a Tekken 1 reboot? Is that, what, what have we actually got here? And, and so just, hey, it's Tekken 8. Guess what? It's a sequel to Tekken. Here's a character that was not in Tekken 1, just to like kind of remind you again, hey, not uh not a reboot of Tekken 1. Okay. Let's see here. Uh Harada has a post on the PlayStation blog right now. This trailer was actually taken directly from a certain part in the current work in progress Tekken 8 story mode played on PlayStation 5. In other words, all the character models, backgrounds, and effects are the same ones that are used in game. Although this was captured from the story mode, it is not a pre-rendered movie made for the trailer, but rather real-time rendered footage, footage running at 60 frames per second, similar to how you would experience the game in versus battle modes. Of course, some of the effects, dialogue, as well as the camera angle is currently being updated and may change when the game launches. Yeah, I mean... But, you know, if they're taking real real game data and just rendering it out extra pretty and extra dynamic for trailer cameras and all this other stuff. The Tekken series has always been known for the dramatic pre-rendered movies from its story mode. That's true. Dramatic is not the word I'd use. Um, in addition, we also have uh, plenty of other exciting content from Tekken 8 we would very much like to show you. However, for our first announcement, we chose to focus on the content that showcases the quality of this game on the PlayStation 5. In the trailer, you can see the level of quality in the newly created playable character models that completely sets itself apart from the current Tekken 7. And in little details like how water droplets run down the character's skin. Yeah, yeah sweat is back. It's uh, 2005 all over again. This is not footage created solely for trailer purposes, but an actual real-time rendering of what is happening on the game screen. And if you pay attention to the background during the battle, you can see dynamic waves and tornadoes, a huge tanker gradually breaking apart, storm rendering so realistic that you can feel the wind pressure, the density of the rain. These are all battle stage effects to be used in this title. We are, of course, working hard to enhance the quality even further. The quality is dynamically improving each day. With the giant tanker moving closer to the shore in the background and the large flames flare up near where the character is standing, we hope you look forward to seeing them in game. Also, the Tekken series holds the record of being the longest running story in a video game. Uh... N no? No, that's not true, actually. The Tekken series does not... It, 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 I mean, it may hold a record, but that record is wrong. Like that, The Tekken series holds the record of being the longest-running story in a video game. Just as the ending dialogue of Tekken 7 mentioned, this new entry will focus on the father and son showdown between Kazuya and Jin. As for the meaning of the scene in the trailer and how significant it is to the main story, we look forward to you finding it out when the game releases. I mean, throw these motherfuckers in a volcano. You want to talk about your long-running story? I mean, just off the top of my head, Mortal Kombat... Uh, 
is a is an ongoing video game story that started in you know what 92 91 92 I should know that but I don't um and that is still happening and is still connected to for all the twists and turns that thing took like that is all meant to be part of you know they they have reset continuity in ways that are still true to the original games. I don't think that necessarily just because it has a time travel thing or a universe thing. I, I, that doesn't seem to me to make it not part of the same story. Right. Uh, what else though? Longest running, Longest running story in video games. I feel like I am. Yeah, Bryn says, yeah, the, Bryn has a quote from somewhere, Wikipedia or something. The Tekken series apparently holds the Guinness World Record for the longest running cohesive storyline in all of video games. According to Harada, this revelation came during a recent video interview from Bandai Namco where Harada explained that even he was taken by surprise by that record. Doesn't that sound like someone just needs to pay Guinness to show up and change it and that they did it first? Uh, that's how Guinness works these days, right? You just pay them and have them show up. And, um, but yeah, that cohesive, yes, cohesive is a real weird term there that I think doesn't, um, I mean, longest running by number of games? No. No, it, it would not be that. Mortal Kombat would be that. I'm going to go ahead and say Mortal Kombat is cohesive. Even though they, they do reboot continuity. Like, I don't think that, I don't think that necessarily, it's not like they threw shit out. They came up with a storyline reason to throw shit out, but that's neither here nor there. That's still a story. Metal Gear, another good example. But also, you could argue that Metal Gear is over. So is it still the longest running, or is it done? If they put out another Metal Gear, then uh, they can attempt to call up the Guinness people and say, Hey, we were doing this in the 80s. Uh, Shags Magoo on the Discord says Warcraft would be longer. Yep, World of Warcraft is... Uh, a long-running video game that has, of course, the Warcraft games before it, but... When did Warcraft 1 come out? It was after Tekken, right? Oh, 94. So that's right around the same. I mean, that's that's not too far. I mean, Tekken 1 is uh all is late is December 94 for arcades. Or or I guess actually is that the is December 94 the PlayStation version in Japan cuz yeah. Okay, Japan arcade September 94. For Tekken 1, Warcraft 1, Orcs and Humans, that's November 94. So, technically, Warcraft is a month off of that. Um, am I going to... Oh, I don't want to get weirdly obsessed with this debunking this shit, but there's that, that no part of that no part of that sounds true. No part of Tekken being the longest running story in video games seems true at all. At all. Mortal Kombat 1. And, I, and I'm, not even, I'm not even saying that Mortal Kombat 1 is definitely the one that is the longest running, but that's October 92. In arcades. October 8th, 1992 is the build release date. Um, and then home versions came in 93. So that is years before, um, that is years before there was a Tekken years before a Tekken existed. I, I feel sick inside even talking about this. I don't, I can't. All right. I, yeah. What's yeah. Street fighter. Okay. I mean, there are fewer games, so I guess maybe you could try to say, or fewer, fewer story-driven... Well, no. I mean, shit, man. Yeah, 
Yeah. John says East, the East franchise. Yep. The East games are, and they're still making those, I mean, relatively recently, right? So, what a, what a weird statement. Um, cause yeah, I mean, with Street Fighter, it's not always the most story focused thing. You could try to make that argument about cohesion, but like, if you include the alpha games and, and all the different things there, like it's, maybe they're trying to say that, you know, Tekken is more story focused than Street Fighter, which I could maybe buy that weird, very thin way to differ differentiate, but that still seems this, this seems like 100% bullshit. You know, I, I, anyway, a classic Guinness, a, a, cl a classic when it comes to Guinness getting involved. Um, yeah, are the wizardry games connected? I'm not sure about that. Legend of Heroes. Hmm, yeah. But wizardry, when was the last wizardry? Final Fantasy, yeah, you could make the argument that's not cohesive. Um... But no, the, the, the Tekken thing seems ridiculous. Okay, this is something else from... Okay, so here's another quote on this topic. Meanwhile, Resident Evil and Metal Gear link tales within their own consistent worlds with the latter spanning more than five decades of narrative and subsequently boasting the longest running consistent video game universe. However, Tekken has sustained a singular story thread that's evolved throughout its core series, unfolding events chronologically between releases. Mm. That's, yeah, that is uh, some fucking we got the Guinness people to show up and carve out a highly specific lane for us to win this award, and then they didn't even do a great job with that. That's horseshit. Like, no. Like, it's still, like, Metal Gear is still a story. Like, it, it, unfolding events chronologically, are you trying to say, like, it doesn't do any time travel horseshit. Like, that matters? Like, that doesn't matter. That's a, that... That doesn't matter. Mortal Kombat has been about that fucking tournament one way or the other for a very long time. Even when it wasn't about that, it was because it was about that and it spun out into more shit. And when they did their reboot universe this last time around, that's what it did. I, mm, I am unhappy about this and I need to stop thinking about it because it will consume me. Oh, man. That's ridiculous. All right, what, uh, what else? Not a ton of VR stuff there. They did show that Tales from the Galaxy's Edge, which is apparently available on uh, the Quest. At Pacific Drive, let's uh, let's check out this. We'll skim uh, this PlayStation blog story to see if there's anything of detail. Paci <sighs> Pacific Drive is a run-based first-person driving survival game. As you explore the zone, your car is your lifeline. Scavenge resources to maintain and improve your car. As long as you keep it running, it will protect you from the surrounding dangers. So. Rumors and stories about the zone run rampant. Don't I know it? This takes place in the Pacific Northwest. Structured as a road light. See, because it's like a rogue light, but it's a road light. Mm. Going to close this browser tab. Closing this browser tab and never thinking about Pacific Drive again, if that's what you've got. Oh, my God. Oh, oh. Each trip from your garage into the zone is full of strange anom anomalies and technologies and plenty of radiation. If you keep your car in good shape, you're, you'll be safe to explore, scavenge for resources, and drive further into distinct biomes that offer more valuable rewards. The land shifts with every passing storm, making each journey a unique experience. Discovering new resources will allow you to outfit your vehicle with defenses, trick out your garage, and find more dangerous routes that bring you deeper and deeper into the zone. They've been on it since 20... Uh, they were, the Ironwood Studios was founded in 2019. I guess they've been working on this 
work at this ever since. Um, 2023 for that one. I, you know, that game had a neat look to it, but also I, there's something about it being run based that is rubbing me the wrong way. And what that is, is that there's just been a lot of run based games over the last handful of years here. And the bar is very high when it comes to that style of game. But that said, the game itself looked neat. So if it, they can put it together and Hey, if they're coming up with great terms like road light, then we've got to give them some rope, some road, some rope. Hmm. Road light. Oh, like a dragon is That's a really weird name for that game. To go from Yakuza like a dragon to then localizing this game that's been out for a while and be like, uh, instead of, the, well, I guess Ryu got, I guess, okay. I guess it's maybe it's, it's no, that whatever. That's a literal translation of the Japanese version. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Anyway, great that that game's coming over, that they're going to do stuff to it. Um, and, and clean it up. That's whatever. People have really grown to love those games from that studio. And now this is being built on Unreal Engine 4. It's crazy. Uh, it's out in February. That's pretty soon. And uh, they've got a live stream on September 14th. So, you know, at 3 a.m. Pacific. <laughs> Tune into our live stream on September 14th at 3 a.m. Pacific for a special surprise. The stream will be available online afterwards as well. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, I don't know. You know, hey, not a bad showing. I feel like the bar, honest, honestly, the bar for state of play is really low. I think they've put on some real, uh, some real rough shows. <laughs> and, uh, and so, you know, maybe that helps a little bit, but I, you know, I, I think it's one of those things where when people see these shows, they are always like, I want to see some big first party announcements and, uh, all this other stuff. Rise of the Ronin looked really awesome. Um, but uh, yeah, you, you see people are always like, what's the next big sequel, but whatever. It's, it's good to have like a little bit more tech and eight. I think, I think stellar blade look cool. Like there's cool looking games on there in, in, in that show. Even if you're, you're not necessarily, you know, even if you're focusing on this thing, looking for just like first party bangers, you can't always get your first party bangers. So there you go. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't hate it. Good, good, good roster of games. I will take these 10 games. Over the uh, 8,000 games Nintendo had this morning. For the most part. With with some exception. Being the Fist of the North Star fitness game. Of course. And. Uh, yeah, maybe that's it. I don't you know. And, and Zelda. I'm, I'm fucking around. But but yeah. This was interesting and had some good uh, kind of left field stuff in it. And so that's nice. But now I'm now I'm sitting here just thinking about the actually that hey best thing I saw all day today. Other than uh you know this this rain inferno red dragon which I have not put on the the energy drink ranking list yet but you know. Um. Yeah. Look good, good looking stuff, but the best thing, fist of the north star, fitness edition, whatever it's, whatever it is called. So congratulations. To uh, let's get fit together whenever that thing comes out. I'm gonna head out, uh, and you know, it's been a long, weird day of streams and such. So take care of yourselves. Uh, podcast is live on podcast services where you're looking for it, all that other stuff. So go check it out. Head over to patreoncom slash Jeff Gerstman, get an ad free version of that podcast, all that other stuff, you know. And if you don't know, well, not, I mean, now, now you do anyway. I'm going to get going. Have a great rest of your day. I will see you uh, in, the, in the morning with some more video games if you're watching live. Otherwise, hi. How's it going? See you soon.